We have done top tens of some of the best cards in my collection, but this is one that I can't believe I've overlooked, and I'm really excited to share it with you. Let's get right into it. Welcome to the most passionate content for card collectors on YouTube and possibly the whole entire internet. As usual, I am your host, Jake Roy, 90s b-ball cards here on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, a little bit of TikTok. We'll see what I have for this week on there. So today we're looking into my top 10 Penny Hardaway cards in my collection. And if you can believe it, we have not looked into this before. So we've looked into top 10 Jordan cards, LeBron, Kobe, even some of my kind of second tier PC guys like Iverson, Kevin Garnett, my top 10 most valuable cards in my collection, my best pack hits, all kinds of top 10s, but never have I just specifically honed in on my number one PC guy, and that's Penny. And this year, I've shared a lot of these cards, so these might not be the first time you've seen these, but we'll talk about them a little bit differently. You'll see where they rank in my PC. Uh, coming up later on this year, I'm going to talk about some of my biggest wants on my want list for my Penny PC. So lots of fun stuff coming, but this is a look into all of those best cards in my PC based on their value. And a lot of this is coming off of Card Ladder. A lot of these cards do not sell often uh, or haven't sold in years in some cases. So Card Ladder came in very handy. Big shout out to the team over there for helping me get some of this data so I can share it with you. We're using their predicted values for some of these cards. Some of them are based on, you know, most recent sales, all kinds of stuff. So we'll talk through the information and I'll share the graphs. I'll share the data with you. Let's get right into the fire. All right. So here we go. Top 10 penny cards in my penny PC and for Hardaway, for those who don't know his famous nickname, we will throw a couple of honorable mentions as usual, but starting out here at number 10, we have got the 9798 Skybox Golden Touch. Uh, and this is an insert that I got relatively recently, one of my top pickups of the year in that video. So these cards were one in 360 packs. An effective uh, pack odds for the penny specifically, since we are just looking at the penny, and that's my PC guy in this, would be one in 5,400 packs. So, you know, there's uh, a, a few people in this set that aren't penny that would be fun to pull but we're looking at just penny you know so very rare cards i mean one in 360 packs is more than one per 10 boxes so you're looking at about two cases to hit one of the golden touches uh you know so this one right now is valued at about 515 so about 500 you know to 550 dollars depending on condition you can see all the die cuts black borders you know, it shows dings, cut, uh, nicks, all that kind of stuff on the corners, on the edges. Uh, very unique cards. I really always wanted one of these, but when I heard the uh, folks from Arena Design talk about the design process, you can see, you know, on the front, Penny looks almost like a, he's greening, almost like a chrome or a refractor. Uh, and that's partly because they used golden cardstock. It was something that was a controversial choice that the Skybox folks uh, weren't necessarily sold on until the arena team said, hey, let us show you guys what we're talking about. And um, they were wowed. And uh, I think the, you know, the collectors have been the beneficiaries of their foresight and their forcefulness in belief of what this card could look like with that unique kind of gold cardstock some texture on there just a lot of really cool intricate things to enjoy uh you know stuff that you can pour over that's what i love so when you see cards and you keep looking at them and see new details and all of a sudden you notice the embossing and and you know all different kinds of nice interesting and intricate details so very rare cards very valuable all the cards on this list have gotten significantly more <laughs> valuable in the last couple of years uh especially so uh this was one that i was very excited to be able to get my collection number 10 there Number nine, so we have got the 96 
97 flare showcase this is the legacy and this one is the row one so 96 97 the first year of the legacy collection and this was the first legacy collection card that i ever got into my collection uh so there were three different versions you know we've talked about flare showcase especially on some of my instagram posts about how confusing the set was especially when it first came out so uh the row one is the second level the second you know tier so to speak but basically still kind of a, a base set or a parallel set but the legacy all of those are numbered to 150 so uh the row one and two sell for close to the same row zero sells for significantly more um this one big shout out to kyle from wax museum podcast uh he found this in a lot and was able to get this uh to me we were able to agree on a deal on the pretenses that this is never leaving my collection uh you know which is an easy agreement to make because uh my pc cards are never going anywhere so uh very excited to have gotten this when it was my first legacy collection card uh you know so we talked about the scarcity and these being numbered to 150 no pack odds just the serial numbering to let you know how scarce they are and this card today is about 550 to 600 dollars you know again that's a guesstimate because uh these don't come up for sale often at all um and sometimes they're graded adding all kinds of nuance to it but uh really cool i love the dark color on on this row one uh more so than than some of the other rows but all of them look great Number eight. So we've got the 9899 Skybox Thunder Noise Boys. Uh, this one was inserted one in 300 packs. Uh, so again, extremely rare cards. I mean, all of these, again, are going to be very high pack odds. I think it's interesting sometimes when you look at the effective player rate. So for this one, it would be one in 4,500 packs. So a little bit less scarce than the Golden Touch, in fact. But you can see, you know, just the beauty of the Noise Boys. I love this penny. Uh, and again, another one from the folks at Arena Designs where they designed this. And Jean went on a uh, show, I think she was with Jeremy Lee, Sports Cards Live, when she talked about the card stock again, being very intricate for this. And you can almost bend these cards in half without doing any damage to them. It is a very thin card stock. It's a lenticular card stock, uh, but almost like a mini lenticular. I'm not a huge fan of lenticular cards typically, but this isn't one where it tries to show you two different images or 3D, three dimensional. It just adds some really cool color variation to the background. Uh, and then you can also see, you know, how thin it is because when you flip it over on the back, it's almost like you can see some of the printing through the back. That is common. Uh, I've talked to a lot of collectors that have had questions about that, if it's counterfeit or if that's normal or if it's damaged, you know, and it is it is normal. It is typical. These are very thin cards, uh, you know, and definitely one that sometimes makes sense to have graded or at least just slabbed just to protect it so it's not sliding all around. You know, this is one that I wanted to make sure I had it in a team bag uh, in addition to the top loader, uh, you know, and I've, I've moved a lot of stuff into card savers for the same reason, you know, just they don't move around as much, uh, which is nice. So, you know, die cuts. I also love the picture of Penny there in his pinstripe uniform. One of the last years you see him, but also the Penny shoes. There are some that uh, I wish I could get. Maybe they'll retro those. If uh, Nike's watching, I would love to get a pair of those in retro. Got the black ones. I want the black. Uh, I want the white and blue as well. So anyway, <laughs> let's get into the value. So this is about a $600 card right now. Usually they go for a little bit more than 600. So maybe, you know, 620 or so uh, if one shows up again. Uh, one that I was actually able to have duplicates of at one point and, and move one on to another collector that needed uh, the penny card. So just a card I can't get enough of. Again, just keep looking at it. It's beautiful. All right, the next one here might be a little bit of a surprise to a lot of people. So we've got the 1996 Skybox USA. This is the gold sparkle. So there is a gold version. This one you can see the kind of sparkle or, you know, maybe you could call it the atomic or uh, I'm sure there's a different call, uh, name for it uh, with Panini today. But these cards are very rare. So the Skybox USA set, you know, was for the US team. And uh, there is not a ton of those cards made. Uh, the base cards, not that they're rare or anything like that, but it, it's just the packs weren't, you know, plentiful. So when you get a card that has low 
number odds, uh, it's it's even more scarce. Uh, these show up maybe once or twice a year uh, publicly. They trade privately, uh, probably a little bit more than that, but uh, you know, a lot of people who have them want to hold on to them. So these are one in 180 packs. And again, you're looking at for the Skybox USA packs to get one. Uh, it's a 10 player set, so the effective rate for Penny is one in 1,800 packs. Uh, you know, so again, very rare, very hard to come by. Uh, and if you get a player on the U.S. team, these are a, you know, a fun chase. I don't know if fun's necessarily the right word because it can get frustrating at times, especially when you miss them. And this is one that I think is interesting when we're looking at the value. So these are valued, uh, you know, again, looking at card ladder, we're looking at about $600, $650, right around there, uh, based on the last sales. But there is one that showed up on eBay, a uh, fun little story, uh, showed up on eBay for a buy it now or best off for $25 plus shipping. Uh, when I saw that, <laughs> I was astonished. Uh, I missed out on it. A lot of the other penny collectors that I saw missed out on it. It was up on eBay for maybe an instant. Uh, I reached out to the seller, in fact, to find out, you know, what was going on with that. Did he take it down or whatnot? He said that he knew he made a mistake when it sold instantly. As soon as he basically posted it, it sold. What he had meant to do is start it at bidding with a starting bid of $25 uh, or best offer. He knew it was a pretty rare card uh, and he made the mistake, but he told me that he was going to honor that sale, um, you know, which good on him. It's kind of the opposite of a lot of those posts we see on, on eBay of, of scammers. So, you know, one of those guys that made an honest mistake, a card that's worth significantly more than what he got for it, uh, but he's gonna stand by that because that's that's his mistake and it's somebody else's win. So good for whoever bought that uh, and, and good for the seller to, to stay honest. But it is about a $600, $650 card. These are very rare. Don't come up often, um, and player collectors especially are, uh, you know, very eager to get their hands on one if they haven't already. So uh, that's that's a great one that I was surprised to see the value when I did. Next one, we've seen this in a lot of videos. Uh, so this is the 9697 EX 2000 cut above. One of those that ever since I was a kid was probably the one that I wanted the most. You know, just aesthetically a gorgeous card. Love that he's in his blue jersey. Love how that plays with kind of the refractor finish. Uh, those Air Penny 1, which are going to be retro this year. Hopefully I can get my hands on a pair. Uh, <laughs> lots of stuff for the childhood, uh, you know, aspects of my, my nostalgia to really be stoked by. Love the die cut here. Uh, something to be watch watchful for on fakes, especially when you're looking at the Jordans and other ones that are really valuable. But these have seen a pretty significant uptick in value in the last year or so. So right now, this is about a $650 card. Uh, the odds on pulling one of these are one in 288 packs. Uh, again, 10 players in the set, a lot of the biggest names, you know, Jordan Iverson in his rookie season, Kevin Garnett, Shaq, a lot of other guys. So the effective rate to get a penny is one in 200, uh, 2,880 packs. So very hard to pull this one. And this actually, I was able to obtain it while we were on a live stream uh, back when we were doing the uh, PWCC watch parties, uh, which seems like forever ago, we had, we had stopped doing those and they've moved to the premier auctions, which are a little bit more difficult for scheduling. So that's why we haven't done those lives in a while. But I was able to get this not through PWCC. It was a different auction or uh, a different seller that had kind of a, an odd listing. So uh, I was able to get it for, uh, it was a really good price then <laughs> looking back it is even more so of a good price now so um you know about 650 dollars is what these are going for at this point uh, condition and authenticity is definitely an issue so it might be one that i uh, could get slabbed later on uh but not in a rush because it's not going anywhere all right, next one. We've talked a lot about this one. So 96, 97 Fleer Metal. This is the Precious Metals Parallel. So the precursor to PMGs in the following year, uh, a pretty subtle difference visually where it's just silver in the background. Uh, basically getting rid of all the color that would be there uh, and just kind of getting that monotone look, which I really think suits this card, especially with Penny, very well. Love the silver tones. It goes perfectly with the magic, uh, that silver star that they have in their uniform. Really cool stuff. 
These uh, have been on a heater lately. Uh, in fact, I just saw one sell uh, at auction for over $800, ungraded of penny. Uh, some people are kind of questioning that auction and this just took place. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens if that uh, remains or if it gets relisted or whatnot, but it looks pretty legitimate. There's no uh, funny business that I could detect. Uh, but there are a couple others that have sold, you know, with the prices going up, they've been surfacing a little bit more often. Uh, so right now this is about a $650 card as well. Uh, so these were only in series two, only in hobby packs, and they were inserted at a rate of one in 36 cards or one in 36 packs, but it's essentially a parallel of the entire second series. So getting the penny is very difficult because there are a hundred cards in that second series. So the effective rate to pull this one specifically is one in 3,600 packs. Uh, you know, so I have seen some of these cards that have just gone unnoticed. Uh, people didn't know that they had this parallel uh, and sold it like it was a base card. Uh, and especially in the case of some of the stars like Penny, Jordan, Kobe, Iverson, you know, that's a pretty woeful mistake. If you're looking at a, a semi-star or a common player, you know, 10 to $20 is probably the going rate, but you still don't want to sell it in a, in a 10 cent bin. <laughs> So, uh, very rare, very hard to come by and getting exceptionally valuable. Uh, we'll see if the prices kind of settle down a little bit. Again, we'll keep an eye on that auction uh, and make sure that it stays good. But right now, I would put this at about $650, um, but noting that that most recent auction was over $800. Uh, so, this could move up pretty significantly, pretty quickly in this list <laughs> in the future. Next one, similar to one we've seen before, but slightly different. So 96, 97 Flare Showcase, this is another legacy. This is row two, so basically the base version, the, the lower, uh, more common version, but the legacy, of course, being numbered to 150. And this, again, is gonna be higher in the list because it's a PSA 9. Uh, so one that I had gotten actually very close in timing to the one uh, Kyle and I were able to form a deal on, and then I got this raw and then went ahead and got it graded. They both looked very good, but, um, you know, wanted to get this graded. Uh, at the time I was thinking I might, you know, use this as kind of, you know, trade bait or, or something to, to move into other penny cards. But, you know, when you do well grading, sometimes they just type kind of have a you know, connection to you. So now I feel a little more connected to it. Uh, you know, it's a good memory of my first PSA order. Lots of good memories that are now tied to this. Uh, you know, we can always rationalize why we want to keep cards in our collection, right? So, uh, you know, this one, again, very hard to determine a value. Uh, you know, PSA 9, it's a pop 2. There are no 10s out there. Uh, you know, so this is really one of two of the highest graded of this card. So to pinpoint a price specifically on this one is pretty difficult. You got to do some fuzzy math with multipliers, uh, you know, so it gets pretty kludgy pretty quickly, uh, you know, so if we're going to try to pin a value on this, I would say about $750. But again, if one shows up for auction, it's really anybody's guess. I mean, it wouldn't shock me if it went for $500. Uh, it would probably shock me if it went for a thousand, but you know, again, it's a pretty wide range of what these could go for. We know what the other ones have sold for raw. Uh, those come up a little more often because there's only two in a nine. Uh, you know, so the sky is the limit, but again, uh, we should probably temper our expectations. So that is really a fuzzy math estimate to put it somewhere in this ranking. Um, it's definitely somewhere in the top 10, uh, but for right now, it's number four. Uh, and we'll see if that other one shows up at some point in the future and uh, and what we get for a good value on it. But these are really cool looking cards. Love that first year of Flair Showcase, uh, building off of the Flair brand uh, and the next year stepped it up another level. So really happy to have this and I was very glad I got a nine. All right, next one here, not one I've shared much or talked about much. Uh, so it might be a little bit of a surprise for some folks seeing this here on this list, but 9899 UD Ionics, this is the Authentics autograph, of course, of Penny Hardaway. So this is a BGS 9 with an auto grade of a 10. And a lot of times, for me especially, if I'm looking at an autographed card of Penny or anything uh, autographed that's graded 
the auto grade most of the time is going to be more important, at least to me, than the card grade itself. So getting an autograph that is in, you know, basically perfect condition uh, was something I was very glad to do. This was, was a card I got as part of a trade, as well as the Noise Boys uh, and a couple others uh, for that Luca that I had pulled. So one of those uh, that... <laughs> Might have uh, been one I could. I wish I could get back just because of the value of the Luca, but very, very happy with the penny cards I got back. So, uh, you know, to call it a regret would be uh, inaccurate. I'm very pleased still to this day uh, to have these cards in my collection. So at this point, this is probably about a $700 card. Uh, again, you know, thanks to the folks at Card Ladder for helping me out with the valuation on this card. So, you know, this could go behind the legacy that we just talked about in value, but because this is a little bit more of a, of a firm value, you <laughs> than the legacy uh i'm pretty comfortable putting it here so these uh you look at a lot of the other players in the set not a ton of players those were numbered to 475 so the presumption is that this was short printed to 475 and uh they just didn't get numbered like the other ones did so that is an assumption it is not something that has been stated in fact by upper deck uh, you know, but you look at how infrequently these pop up, uh, and that probably holds pretty true. So, uh, this is really the biggest name player that's in the set for Ionix. Uh, there's some other UD Authentics autographs uh, that aren't in the Ionix packs, but the Ionix packs, they tried to, uh, you know, really wrangle in that set because, uh, it was a pretty premium product in the first year that they did it for Upper Deck. So, putting this at about $700, but ranking it higher in my list at number three than the one that might be a little bit more might be a little bit less they might be the same we don't know <laughs> these are these are really rare and really hard to put values on all right number two on the list so one uh you know i've shared this as often as uh, i can so uh i never get tired of it so this is the 99 2000 tops stadium club chrome first day issue refractor of penny of course in a BGS 10, which just makes it all that much more sweet. Uh, you know, so this is numbered to 200, or numbered to 25. But the interesting thing, thanks to the Topps company for doing this, they did give us pack odds for these cards uh, that even are serial numbered. So the odds of pulling any first day issue refractor, which is, you know, again, numbered to 25, are one in 186 packs. So, you know, not as long of pack odds of some of the other cards, longer than, uh, you know, the, the sparkle, but this is a parallel, a parallel of a parallel, essentially. So you can get one of any of the cards in the set. So the effective pack odds of pulling the penny specifically, which is the one you know I want, uh, is one in 27,900 packs. So almost one in 30,000 packs, just astronomical odds to get the one of the guy that you want if it's just one guy that you're looking for. So, uh, you know, this one is very hard to place a value on. Uh, and I was actually talking to Christina a lot about the value on this, uh, you know, so thanks to her for putting up with me and putting together a lot of the <laughs> information here. Uh, so this one, if we're using the trade valuation, so I got this in a trade uh, for the Kobe Flare Metal Rookie, which I got back as a PSA 10. At the time of the trade, the value on the Kobe was the same as the value we were putting on this at about $1,500. Right now, the Kobe, you know, has fluctuated a little bit in price. Uh, you know, so if you're trying to put this at the same valuation as the Kobe, you know, it's going to fluctuate accordingly. But, you know, each card is uh, linked individually. So... I would put this at about $1,500, but if you're using some math to go and figure out, uh, you know, what would a raw copy be, Christina went and took a look, uh, you're looking at a raw copy being about, I think, $1,200 uh, is, is the estimate there. So then you're going to have to do some more fuzzy math to figure out what the multiplier would be for BGS 10, which for a lot of cards is very significant. Uh, you know, so I looked into some of the cards and it's about 10 to 12 times what the raw copy would go to for. So, you know, for this card, you're looking at, you know, a, a $10,000 plus dollar card and a BGS 10. But, you know, as a lot of conversation in the hobby goes, how much more valuable does a PSA 10 or a BGS 10 make a very, very low numbered card? Uh, you know, so hard to really put a valuation on that, you know, so if I'm putting a valuation based on what the raw copy goes for, I might go one and a half times, uh, you know, so that's probably going to put us right around the $1,500, $1,700 valuation. Uh, but, you know, if another one does get a BGS 10, uh, which seems pretty unlikely, uh, we would see then 
what this card would really be worth because I'm not selling it. This has uh, been a dream card of mine for, uh, you know, two decades, essentially. Basically, as soon as I knew that this was a card that existed, I wanted it. Uh, so to finally get it and get it in a trade for a card that I went and got graded and got surprised by the grade, uh, you know, just a great story. Uh, and, you know, I love BGS graded cards. So uh, having a BGS 10, you know, not a black label. Someday maybe I'll get a black label of something in my collection, but a uh, really cool card, you know. So I would love to hear your estimates on what the valuation is on this card because I'm open to any information that anybody can glean in the in the valuation. Uh, I think it's an interesting topic. But that's number two. Let's get into some of the honorable mentions. Some great honorable mentions, some of those very close to making the cut. You know, there's a lot of cards that I could have thrown in here. Uh, you know, if you let me, I would do my top 50 and we'd be here all day. But, uh, you know, I could talk about my favorite penny cards uh, until until the cows come home, as they say, or something like that. Anyway, number one we have here, 9798 EX 2001 Jambalaya. Again, this is in a BGS 9. Uh, probably no shortage of hearing me talk about this card just one that never gets old for me uh you know I, i'm never gonna get tired of this extremely excited to have gotten this in my collection uh, it was a very difficult trade to make at national but again another piece of a great memory at my first national uh, an incredible time so the jambalaya uh in addition to being an absolutely gorgeous card that you could just stare at all day uh it is the pack odds one in 720 packs so the effective rate for the penny is one in 10,800 packs so not as long of odds as the first day issue uh but we don't know what the print run was exactly to this there there have been speculations that if they had serial numbered the jambalaya that it would be about 250 copies made uh you know really hard to put an exact number on that because the only the way that you would do that is you would take a look at serial numbered cards that are in the set and then use those cards and their pack odds to do some kind of uh, extrapolation for the pack odds that you have for other cards and figure out what the uh, overall you know run of how many boxes were printed and and so on and so forth so people have tried to speculate with that but the only thing that you have to use in this set are the serial numbered credentials which use mirrored serial number and again adds another layer of difficulty to trying to figure out the print run but i think it is an interesting conversation because these are such incredibly important cards in the hobby in the conversation of the 90s inserts and designs and all kinds of incredible stuff that you can talk about with the jambalayas uh you know i love the penny also because this picture on the penny is a great action shot uh you know most of the pictures on the jambalayas are incredible shots uh, they did a lot of really uh you know detailed work on these to make sure that no detail was overlooked uh just you know beautiful cards again you can just look and find new details to enjoy um you know i'm not a huge fan of lenticular but they did a really good job with how they utilize that that technology multicolors, all kinds of incredible stuff i mean just 
what a card. BGS9, again, uh, the grade isn't as important on this card as the authentication is. We've talked about that before. Uh, the interesting thing is I've seen some that have gotten graded, you know, uh, that have not gotten a 10 on the corners. And I don't know how you can uh, give a card that really has no corners because of the die cuts, uh, anything but a 10 on the corners. But, um, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, a nine is not going to hurt or improve the value significantly, in my opinion. Uh, this card is right now about a $2,500 card. So about $2,500 is what these cards are valued out currently. Uh, you know, and Jambalaya cards just seem to get more and more desirable as the years go on. Uh, you know, so a card that I'm very excited to have, you know, in my collection because childhood me... Um, dreamt of this card and thought it would never happen. So to have it now, very exciting uh, dream come true for sure. All right, so that is my top 10, you know, thank you for sticking around because uh, I could talk for days about these cards. I love them so much. There's so much that I could share. You know, we could sit down across a table, share some drinks and still be talking about these cards. So uh, I can't believe I've overlooked talking about my penny top 10, you know, uh, but some of these will probably almost inevitably be on my top 10 review when I do the annual review of my top 10 cards in my overall PC. Uh, so right now, if we're going to snap the line, that penny jambalaya would probably be the most valuable card in my collection. Uh, you know, so really love that card lots to love but uh you know we've got some time before that top 10 card top 10 card in my pc video uh you know we're set to do that like i said i like to do that once per year so uh we'll see what it looks like then there could be some new additions could be some movements in my collection but let me know down in the comments what you think about these valuations we used card ladder card ladder has a very very robust algorithm that they have done a lot of write-ups on how they come to those predicted values they are predicted they do give confidence ratings so some of these they're more confident about based on recent sales than other ones but i would love to hear your thoughts on some of the valuations especially the the top few like the first day issue uh refractor that is numbered to 25 stuff like that that is very very hard to predict any sort of a value because there are very few sales of any kind then you add the grade. So let me know your thoughts. And I would also love to hear if you think that any of these should be placed differently based on different criteria. I just used value to uh, to price it out and figure out what the top 10 were, but there are a lot of different ways that you could go with figuring out a top 10. So let me know your thoughts on that below. Maybe you think number seven should be number two. And I would love to hear why you think that because any one of these you could tell me is the best and i would tell you that i can agree for different reasons so uh lots to love in our collections lots to love in the cards that we enjoy and why we collect them so if you're new here please consider subscribing hit that bell icon so you don't miss any videos in the future new videos drop in once sometimes twice per week we look into my pc rip packs together collector interviews and so much more thanks we'll talk later